The Jehovah's Witnesses have made updates to their rules when it comes to people who are disfellowshipped and they've made changes to their dress codes for both men and women. It's an interesting one. Let's get into this video. Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Monica for those on you. Thank you for stopping by. Guys, before we get into the video, I have a big ask please leave a thumbs up a comment and if possible watch this video till the end because when you do this it actually shows the youtube algorithm that more people want to watch this content and it pushes it out to more people so firstly they updated the rules around people who are disfellowshipped you can now greet them you can't talk socially or just have a long or lengthy conversation but you can greet them and you can extend an invitation to the meetings and this is especially encouraged with the upcoming memorial taking place. This honestly shook me because I was like, damn, I knew this was coming, but not this quickly. See, in Norway, the Jehovah's Witnesses have been accused of human rights violations for shunning and for also shunning minors. So it's for shunning people and for shunning minors. And because of this, their funding has been removed. I'm going to create a very detailed and lengthy video that's coming up on the Norwegian case. So stay tuned for that. But because of that case, more and more governments have been looking into the Jehovah's Witnesses and how they are violating human rights. So Jehovah's Witnesses are kind of worried. So what did they do? They made amends to their rules. People who are disfellowshipped can now be addressed. However, I noticed that when they spoke about this specific rule change, they really referred to a lot and a lot of Bible verses. And I'm thinking this is just to maybe make their members feel like, hey, this is backed up by the Bible. It's not just us, the governing body. Yet the reasoning is so weird because if you've known about these Bible verses forever, what new information do you have now that has made you see in the light? Because the Bible verses they referenced to me was just a bit confusing. And then they referenced study notes. What are study notes? You know, it's just interpretations. So basically, they have no leg to stand on. They just thumb suck <laughs> this update. And they just told their members, hey, you can now greet this fellowship people. Now the sad part, or maybe not so sad, is that these elders who were enjoying removing people and really being toxic in congregations, well, it's their job now to go back out to those people and tell them, hey, Jehovah still wants you back. How embarrassing is that? Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, these elders must be just losing it right now. There's probably going to be a lot of fights internally in different congregations and low-key, I wish I was there to see it. So basically now, elders need to visit people who've been disfellowshipped and try to urge them back into the congregation. And they're not just going to do this once, they're going to do this multiple times. And this is a clear indication that numbers are dwindling down so bad that they have to make these rule changes. And when I saw this man, I don't even know his name, I'm just like, wow, you guys are really starting to look more and more worldly like okay jehovah's witnesses we see you <laughs> so that was a big surprise for me at just the rate and how quickly this has happened because i think that they realize that they are not going to change the mind of the norwegian government they will not receive funding until they make these rule changes now another question that's popping out in my mind is that are these changes enough because to me, it's not like anything is truly changing in terms of people who are disfellowshipped. Yes, you can read them and elders will follow up with these people, but will it translate to the whole JW community now, you know, integrating with people who are disfellowshipped? Will they really be talking to them properly? Or will it just still be cold and just or stand offish like it's been for years i don't know it's going to be very interesting to see and even then is this enough for the norwegian government because they still included the disfellowshipping of minors and said that no they will talk to those minors along with their parents so you guys are still making provision for the shunning of children really wow this religion is disgusting but hey those are the rule changes those are the updates Unfortunately, they are not going to be reaching out to apostates as we still need to be ignored. We are tainting their name according to them and in their eyes. So they will not be reaching out to us, unfortunately. But you know what? I'm not too worried. Are you guys worried? Because I'm not. Let's move on to the next update. So they updated the dress code for both men 
and women. Women can now basically wear pants. They said slacks. So slacks or slack pants are like formal looking pants, but still pants. And I'm just like, wow. Cause just June predicted this just a few weeks ago. She asked me this question. Do I think the Jehovah's Witnesses will allow people to wear pants? And I was like, there's no way they'll allow that. They might see these women as lesbians. Girl, I was wrong. They have made the update and change. Women can now wear pants. I'm like, huh? And I don't know how it's going to land, especially in countries like South Africa where women and wearing dresses, it's not just a Western concept, but also in the African community, like women who wear dresses are seen as respectful. For example, in my community, when you go to a funeral, women are obligated to wear pants and to cover our heads, especially if we're going to a burial or a funeral in a very rural community. Like there, they are very much like women you need to cover your head and wear skirts and then men have to wear jackets at those funerals and i feel like because of that it really made the jehovah's witnesses seem more i don't know if the, i don't know the right word but more just they had more eligibility because of that because it made them seem like a very legit religious organization in the african community in south africa specifically so with this rule change i'm quite surprised because they're going to have a very hard time i know in the congregation i was in it's going to be very difficult because they used to really attack um these new age christian churches where women have been wearing pants and women can be preachers or pastors like they've been really going at those churches and now it's them women can wear pants <laughs> guys we can't make this up like this is a literal joke like they want people so bad into the congregation and i'm just like oh my goodness what is happening in warwick what is happening in that toxic work environment because you guys are really pandering pivoting and changing everything at this point lastly men can now wear shirts and just that's it just a shirt you don't have to wear a jacket anymore you don't have to wear a tie anymore i'm like oh my gosh what this is becoming more and more worldly by the day. Now I'm wondering, will this be enough to pull people in? Because I don't think so. I think this might be an exit for a lot of people. Hey, my family can still greet me. My family will still acknowledge me. And people in our congregation, I'm Audi. I'm actually Audi. So it's very much interesting times in the Jehovah's Witness congregation. What do you guys actually think about this? Like, please let me know in the comment section. Do you think this will allow them to get their funding back in Norway? Because I'm like, two minds about it. I don't think it's enough. I actually don't think it's enough. But I know in the Jehovah's Witness eyes, this is a lot. Because it is a lot. It actually is a lot for Jehovah's Witnesses. I am shocked. I am shook it. Not that they've done this, but at the speed they have done this. I predicted like by the end of the year, possibly. Guys, it's still March. We are still in March and they are making these changes. This is showing us two things. The numbers are lower than what we actually think and the money is drying up. The money is actually drying up. For them to be begging, begging for this money from just one country in no way guys let's think about it it's only one country in europe that has deregistered them and they are losing it like this making rule changes like this what is going on what is going on at bethel guys it's going off and i'm here for it and i will see you in the next video where we talk about the norwegian government and the jehovah's witnesses and i'm going to unpack it in great detail so you don't want to miss that video i will see you in the next one